first of all, thank you so much for being here. I've just got to say, as somebody who was a Disney fan long before I had this job as a Disney cast member, to be sitting here in the Haunted Mansion in the middle of the night with you, Tanya, someone who was part of the team that helped bring the original Haunted Mansion to life, and you, Daniel, part of the team that keeps breathing new magic into this attraction. This is a pretty cool thing for me, so I am... Cool for me, too. I'm very excited <laughs> thank you to for be here. allowing me to be here. Oh, oh, it's, it's such a delight to have you with us in Florida. You and I had a chance to sail together to Alaska on a Disney Vacation Club member cruise and became fast friends. I knew if we could ever get you back to Florida, I wanted to sit down and spend some quality time. And speaking of Florida, I'm dying to hear about your first trip here to Walt Disney World because the place looked very different the first time you visited. That was in 1965 and it was called Project X. And we landed here for a few hours in between New Orleans where we had done research and purchased antiques and artifacts for New Orleans Square and the Club 33. And here was this flat land with a few trees. Bill Evans, who was the landscape man, was on the trip. And he had brought, um, imported from around the world, trees here to be hardened off. So when the park started to be built, they would already be here and ready to go. We spent a few hours here. And I understand that was the second time that Walt was here. I happened to be with him, which is pretty terrific. And from here, we went into New York for the second year, uh, second year of the World Fair. Amazing. Now, you've been here for a few days on this trip, so you've had a chance to experience Walt Disney World here oh. in its 50th year. What, what have your impressions been? The vastness. I mean, it's enormous. And just even the distance between the different parks is really astonishing. But the imagination lives on, the, the attention to detail, all of the things that are here, all of the detailing, the research, all of that magic. It's just, I'm thrilled to be here and, and it's a dream come true. You, you are so well known as being you know, part of the team behind such iconic things like the purple wallpaper here in the Haunted Mansion. And I wanna back up to when you first got that assignment, when you hear, a haunted house, a haunted mansion, a haunted attraction. It conjures up images of dilapidated and covered in cobwebs and gruesome. And what you all created was something far more elegant and playful and creepy in all the right ways. What do you remember about the creative direction you were well, given early in the project? This was Walt's idea. He did not want a creepy, dilapidated. He wanted something elegant. And the ghosts participate in that elegance. And so that's what we had. And when it came to wallpapers, I couldn't find a creepy one. And so I remember sitting at my desk kind of doodling some eyes and things. And it was surprising to me that somebody said, it's gone iconic. And I didn't know what that meant. I said, what do you mean? It's gone viral. It's gone iconic. And then I, I found out. And uh, it's been a staggering uh, couple of years since that happened. And I've been... Uh, Oh, I found people with it. it one of the men in uh, Walt Disney World yesterday on his biceps. <laughs> I mean, it's on cars, it's everywhere. Now you just said for a couple of years, it's been surreal. It's been like, what, like 60 years since this came into the pop culture zeitgeist. So am I understanding correctly that for a good 50 years, you had no idea the impact that, that your team's work had made? None at all. That's remarkable. None at all, because I had nothing to do with Disney, really. And so to be kind of discovered a couple of years ago that I had worked with Walt, traveled with Walt and his family and, and knew all of the icons of that era, who were friends of mine as well, uh, was totally staggering to me that this was out there. And uh, suddenly uh, I'm part of it and that's quite exciting. And obviously when you set out to create something, no artist knows what impact their work will have generation after generation. But Daniel, when you and your teams breathe new magic into an attraction like the Haunted Mansion, you do know it's already an icon. It's already part of pop culture, so beloved. I'd imagine that brings great thrill. You, like me, were a fan long before you were a cast member, but it also brings a certain amount of pressure. How do you approach working on an attraction like this and working through that weight of responsibility? That's a, that's a great question. I think a lot of us at Imagineering kind of start projects as fans. You know, many of us uh, 
like you're saying, started at the started at the company and were fans well before we we were Imagineers and everything like that. So there's a lot of weight and but a lot of respect and a lot of love we put into even uh, approaching any of these projects. So especially with the Haunted Mansion, which for a lot of us is one of the most important uh, attractions, you know, that that got us excited about Imagineering in the first place. Um, it's a it's a heavy ask, but uh, when we're thinking about plussing things up or uh, adding new techniques or technologies as as things are thought of or come up with through the years, all of that care and I think um, all of that patience in going into the design and impl implementation of it um, shows in the end. And Daniel, I want to talk about some of the specific new magic that you've had a hand in here at the Haunted Mansion. But before we do that, I want to talk about your role because I think you have one of the coolest jobs on the planet. And so I want to hear more about that because in a company filled with cool jobs, and I certainly love mine, you might have the coolest job. We get to come up with new ideas and new things that are the how do they do that moments in the parks. I, I, I've said it before and I'll say it again, Yale Gracie, whom, uh, whom you know, Master Gracie is named after, and he's kind of like the godfather of the whole special effects and illusion design industry for theme parks, not just Disney, but for kind of everything. Um, and that's that's some amazing shoulders to stand on. You know, he's this this pinnacle of a person, and um, what uh, what he did and what we do today isn't that dissimilar. You know, we, we come up with ideas, whether it's in the shower or in brainstorms or uh, on the way to work on a commute and figure out ways to make this stuff physically, you know, come up with a new way to make uh, an artificial candle or a new way to make ghosts appear. Um, there are all kinds of wacky, crazy ideas, but the key is physically figuring out how to do it. Uh, you mentioned ghosts and so many of the illusions in a place like the Haunted Mansion involve ghosts. And while there are famously 999 happy haunts here, the hat box ghost has a legendary following like few others. That's a ghost with a rich history who was gone for a time, returned to Disneyland. I know out here we're very excited, looking forward to the hat box ghost materializing here at Walt Disney World. For those who don't know, tell us a little bit about the hat box ghost. You had such a role in helping to bring that back to Disneyland, but why is that character so legendary? Well, it's, it, he was kind of an infamous character because really not many people saw him. He, the, the Haunted Mansion at Disneyland opened uh, in August 1969. And the Hatbox Ghost was in that uh, in that show for maybe about a week, and you know you had people coming through for that that week amount of time and seeing the Hatbox Ghost, and then it was gone, and it was sort of like, well, wait, what what happened to that? That was that was really cool, and then it it became kind of. Um, you know, went, went into antiquity uh, of, was that really there? Was, was, was it real? Um, and the truth of the matter is, yes, the Hatbox Ghost is real. He did his thing for a week and then disappeared. And that was because Yale Gracie, who was the creator of the, the Hatbox Ghost, didn't like how it ended up coming out. It was, you know, not up to the high standards that Yale set for his illusions. It didn't fully uh, do the, the effect correctly where his head uh, on top of his shoulders didn't fully disappear. You would see kind of a shadow and it didn't um, fully appear back in his hat box the way he wanted it to. So he took it out of the show. So then come uh, about 2014, 2013 up in Glendale, uh, we came up with a new way of doing the illusion that was pretty foolproof. And the best part, it was kind of like up close magic. So you can get right up to the hat box figure. I mean, like a foot or two away and all of a sudden his head was gone. And then it appeared right in his hat box, you know, immediately. And we had all these people come in through Imagineering from uh, high up executives to, you know, anyone we could get to come and see this figure. And it was always the, the same response. What am I, how, what am I looking at? How did you do that? And it was like, okay, we got something. I think we can, I think we can bring him back. Daniel, what's this like for you tonight? I mentioned how I was kind of freaking out just sitting here with the two of you in the middle of the night in the Haunted Mansion. One of the things you and I have in common is the, the reverence we have for this company's history. 
you hadn't met Tanya before tonight. What has this evening been like for you? Well, I was just going to say I'm freaking out. <laughs> no, it's it's really um, like like you were saying, surreal to be back here. It's it's all I could describe it as surreal. You know, to to have read about people like Tanya, um, you know, my whole life, and and geared, you know, that carrot held in front of me to to be an Imagineer and, and design special effects for Walt Disney Imagineering and work on things Haunted Mansion someday um, and read about the greats, you know, the 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 golden years where uh, it was it was lightning in a bottle and you guys were doing um, just uncharted amazing things to be here with you is, is but crazy. I think it's wonderful for me to meet somebody who's carrying on the traditions that we started, which we didn't know were going to be traditions. <laughs> and to meet somebody as enthusiastic and as brilliant in your, your what, what you do, I think is such, for me, is really amazing too. Oh, so thank, thank you. you. <laughs> I love this. As we wrap up, I just want to ask each of you to share some thoughts about the legacy of this attraction. So this isn't just an old attraction with a cult following strong enough to keep alive. This is still one of the most popular attractions in the park all these decades later. You know, I walked over to the Memento Mori shop, a space that you helped design, and you see a shop filled with designs like the one I'm wearing. So things that you helped create are draped on people's handbags and t-shirts. And um, now our friends at the studio are getting ready to release another Haunted Mansion film to theaters. It just speaks to this enormous legacy. I want to hear from each of you what that means to you, and Tanya, we'll start with you. Here, you're part of the story from the beginning, and you're taken with that story all the way through. You're engrossed in it. And I think this must be part of the magic that everybody feels. How about you, Daniel? What, what, what is it about this attraction? It grips you personally, and do you think has maintained its following for all these years? Well, Obviously, I, I'm partial to the illusions and the special effects, and um, that that's probably my first would be my first stop is they hold up. You know, the, the to to go to the grand ballroom uh, and pass through there and see the ghost dancing, and see Madame Leota flying around and and doing her thing. Uh, not many films that are out there that are you know 50 years old plus hold up. Uh, their special effects and things like that. This attraction does. People ride through it, kids ride through it who are incredibly tech savvy and still see these things and say, how is that possible? That, that I think, is, is incredible. Then the, the second thing um, to, uh, to echo Tanya's sentiment is the story, I think, is, is so amorphous and can be so personal for people. It's not a direct linear story. It's a story that I think every guest goes through and um, kind of makes their own version of. It's not literal, which is in a way kind of like the first interactive way of telling a story because every guest kind of gets something different out of it. It's not being spoon fed to them in a very um, linear way. And I think that gives it some amazing staying power through many generations. Well, I've always said that my career is defined by moments where I stop and think, how did I get here? And this is one of those moments for me. I thank you both for being here. This has just been an incredible experience and I'm very grateful. Thank well, you. For me too, thank you so much. It's a dream come true.